You are listening to the Navigating Adult ADHD podcast, where it's all about education, support, and coaching for adults with ADHD. I'm your host, Zena, a late diagnosed ADHDer, here to help you unpack the challenges, frustrations, and the positive side of living with ADHD. With my no BS approach, I'll help you to better understand your unique ADHD brain and how you can work with it to feel better, increase your self-confidence, improve your relationships, and ultimately achieve your goals. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Navigating Adult ADHD, where it's just you and me today. Last week's episode was one for your loved ones, and I totally forgot at the end of the episode to remind you to send it to them. So my, you know, mental post-it note had completely fallen off the wall, so to speak, (laughs) which I think is so appropriate and ADHD of me. And today I am recording the episode to go out next week, which is ironically the same day that the friends and family episode was released. Is that like a a mental hard thing to get your brain around? Because I really struggled to say that. But anyway, my point is I've had quite a few of you already reach out and say that you love the friends and family episode and it was very appreciated and very well done. And I just wanted to share with you that I'm so grateful to hear that. Thank you. But I also want to tell you about the emotions that I experienced as I was recording that and in the lead up to it being released, I felt some self-doubt, some uncertainty around, you know, whether or not the content was done in a way that would be understandable for friends and family and easy to digest and a bit of fear. I was afraid that I could have come across as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, being quite I don't know aggressive I don't think that's really the word but I didn't I didn't want our friends and family to be put off by that episode attack that's the word that's the word I want I didn't want friends and family to feel attacked at all by that episode so I I had a bunch of emotions but also I really felt like I was recording it for someone else for neurotypical people not for us ADHDers so there was a mix of emotions in that and I wanted to share that because I have a human brain. I experience all of the feels. And at the same time, I let myself experience those emotions and I took action. And it really does speak to some of what we're going to be talking about today in this episode. So I did really want to share that with you all. Now, finally, actually, no, I've got a couple more things. Podcast ratings and reviews. So thank you so much to those of you who have left a review and, you know, left a five star review. That's amazing. I know so many of you have asked me how to do it. (laughs) So what I've decided to do is I'm going to link two little videos. I'm going to link a video to somebody showing you exactly how to do it on Apple Podcasts and somebody showing you exactly how to do it on Spotify. The Spotify one is less than a minute and the Apple one is a few minutes because it shows you a couple of different ways that you can do it. I'm just going to put that right here in this episode. So if you would like to leave us a podcast review and a rating, I'm always so grateful because it helps other people with ADHD to find the podcast and to feel, you know, seen and heard and understood and validated. So thank you. I will share a little video. I finally remembered. I'm on fire today. And the last thing I just wanted to say to you all is if you missed the class I ran recently, the four keys to managing your ADHD, that class was literal fire. I am so happy with how it turned out and the feedback from you guys has been phenomenal. So I have made the replay available. If you missed it, you can go to my website, xenajones.com. And if you click the start here tab, you literally just need to pop your name and email in and you will get instant access to that replay, that class. Okay. Okay, my friends. So today we are talking about ADHD and time management. And in order to talk about that, of course, we need to talk about time blindness. So time blindness is a common symptom of having ADHD. And that means that time for us is either now or not now. 
So we don't often give too much or perhaps even any attention to things that are not in front of us right now. So this is why you may struggle to set goals or never feel like you actually achieve them. So I recently worked with a woman who wanted to write a book, but she'd never had time to write it. She'd never been able to create the outline or to pitch her ideas to publishers because she was always so overwhelmed at work and just trying to get through each day. ADHD is too much present and not enough future. Now that is a quote, I think possibly from Dr. Russell Barkley, but it may have been from Ned Hallowell. But one of our ADHD experts has said that ADHD is too much present, not enough future. And this is why when you are having a bad day, it can feel like your whole life is bad because you're so consumed by the present, by what's happening now. It's because of that time blindness that we may struggle to see outside of the right here, right now situation. So back when I was running a travel agency a number of years ago now, I was working incredibly long hours getting to work early or staying late, taking work home. I was in charge of a team, I think of roughly six people. I was responsible for a business that was turning over six to seven figures And I was constantly anxious and overwhelmed all the time, anxious and overwhelmed. It was, I felt like I was always trying to put out fires. There was always something else coming up. (laughs) There was always more to deal with. Like a staff member would leave and then you'd have to train a new person and then somebody else would hand in their resignation. And then people would go on annual leave and we were short staffed and we didn't have enough people to like run the, the store. And then there would be this huge emergency overseas and people's flights would be canceled and there'd be time changes and all of these things constantly going on. And although I had goals you know, outside of that job, outside of my work, I had goals I wanted to achieve. I never felt like I had time to actually work on them. We often don't give attention to things that are not in front of us right now. Dr. Russell Barkley, and I'm going to quote him, he says, wherever the now goes, we go. And that felt so accurate for me when I heard that. Now, I'm going to be really honest, prior to finding out I had ADHD and discovering it, I did not realize I had time blindness because I assumed that, you know, somebody who struggled with time was that person who was always running late. Shout out to my mom's best friend, Pauline. (laughs) We have a dinner party and we would be like, hey, Pauline, it starts at six, but it actually starts at seven. But we would tell her it starts at six, because if you tell her it starts at six, she'll probably be there just after seven. <laughs> but I always thought of, you know, people who are time blind as being those people who are always running late. And that's one way that time blindness may show up, because they just think, you know, I can do one more thing now, or they don't necessarily account for the time it takes to drive from where they are to where they're going. So that's not the only way that time blindness looks. For me, one of the key ways that it has shown up is when I was giving a presentation or, for example, that class I ran just the other day, right? The four keys to managing your ADHD. Previously, when I had run workshops or online classes like that, I would not allow enough time to work on the presentation and to send out emails and record a podcast episode about it and do all of those things. I didn't have the bandwidth in my brain to think about what needed to happen in the lead up to actually running the class. I would just put the class, the one hour class in my calendar and think I'll get all the stuff done. But I didn't really think about all the time required. And so then I was staying up super late all of the nights in the lead up to that (laughs) overworking in those days leading up. And yes, of course, those of us with ADHD, we love a deadline. But I didn't realize how I wasn't managing my time because I was so focused on what was happening now and not on that future class and what needed to happen for that class. So I just want to offer that as another way that time blindness can show up. So. Aside from time blindness, why else is 
time management a challenge for ADHD is? Hello, executive functions. Because managing our time ultimately requires our executive functions to play nice, to work well together, and to function. So we need to be able to decide what needs to be done, what we're going to do. We need to remember what needs to be done. We need to organize all of the different pieces, the moving parts, the things we need to do and don't need to do. Okay. We need to not give in to our impulses and our distractions. We need to follow through. And sometimes that might mean we need to do something that we may not feel like doing. That's going to require emotional regulation. We're going to need to manage and be aware of the time it takes and how much time we have left. All of those things require executive functions. It's not about getting a better planner or downloading the latest app or using the latest Notion or Potion template, okay? Whatever your friends use. Because those things, they don't address the root cause. Funny side quest. So I, in planning this episode, I often do a bit of research. I like to know what's out there. And I was looking up what is available for ADHD and time management. And one very reputable source online had, which, which I, I love and I use all the time, but I'm not going to name them. It had a list of tips for ADHD and time management. And one of them was to turn off autoplay on your TV. Firstly, I did not know you could do that. And I think it's incredibly smart. So for example, like if I'm watching a Netflix episode and they always like end on like a hooking kind of ending, like, oh my God, I need to start the next one because I don't know what's going to happen, right? And it just auto plays. (laughs) Well, apparently you can turn that off. Good to know. Anywho, my point is while you will find endless tips and tricks online, okay, or through Google and ChatGPT, There are some really great explanations also of time blindness when you do your research. None of that addresses the root cause of time management. Mismanaged time comes from a mismanaged mind. Now stay with me. Think about what was the last thing you procrastinated. Maybe it was even getting out of bed this morning Or perhaps it was going to the gym, going for a walk, or maybe you put off writing a report that you need to do for work. Now I want you to think about what were you feeling when you were procrastinating that task? What were you feeling when you were like either avoiding it or struggling to do it? Were you feeling dread? Were you feeling doubt? Were you feeling anxiety? Or perhaps were you feeling overwhelm? Our emotions drive all of our actions. Think about the last time you got angry at your boss or angry at a coworker. How much work did you get done? Probably not that much. <laughs> I can speaking from experience, perhaps. Our emotions are very distracting. When we don't know how to regulate them and we don't know how to soothe them, they are very distracting. So just the other day, one of my clients, she got an email from her boss, and I may have already shared the story on the pod, I can't remember, but she got an email from her boss saying that he wanted to have a meeting with her at 4 p.m. that day with no context of what that meeting was about, nothing. And of course she panicked right? She was thinking to herself, oh my God, I'm in trouble and I'm about to get fired. She was feeling a lot of fear. She was afraid. And can you imagine how that impacted her productivity? Let's be honest. (laughs) It was not good, right? Because she was afraid. If we are feeling unsure or afraid of doing something wrong or getting in trouble or doubting that we have what it takes, we will procrastinate and we will mismanage our time. Our emotions drive all of our actions. Okay, so when we are mismanaging our time, when we're not using it well, when we're perhaps procrastinating, that comes from a mismanaged mind. 
So my friend, do you know how to regulate and soothe your emotions? Do you know how to manage your racing thoughts in your brain when your brain is like a squirrel on speed all over the place? And do you know how to choose thoughts to support your time and the actions that you want to be taking? Do you know how to coach yourself? Do you know how to coach yourself out of overwhelm and into determination? Do you know how to coach yourself out of self-doubt and into courage? Just today, I was coaching a client and she is wanting to start her own consulting business. Okay. And she's been putting this off. And so we addressed it today. Now she's got lots of people who are interested. She's got a super supportive team around her. She's getting fantastic feedback. And I asked her, how did she feel about doing her very first paid workshop? How did she feel about doing that? And she said to me, I feel afraid. Afraid that I don't have what it takes or maybe even afraid that it won't be good enough. And that is why she had not been taking action because her fear was leading her to procrastinate and go and do other things instead. Now, sometimes we blame time blindness or we say we just don't have enough time or (laughs) this used to be me. I just need more hours in the day. I used to say that all the time. But in actual fact, we just haven't learned how to manage our mind, how to feel our emotions so that we can move through them and get shit done. Yes, my friends, time blindness is 100% real. Executive function challenges, 100% real. And we can learn how to manage our time by learning how to manage our mind and regulating our emotions. If you think about it, like time itself is not a physical thing. I went on like a bit of a not, I wasn't high, but like a trip. I went on a trip in my brain thinking about time. <laughs> you can't hold it and you can't touch it. We can't see time. Yes, we can see a clock, but time itself, you can't hold on to that. You can't physically grab it. And the thing with us as ADHD is that we are very out of sight, out of mind. The reality is we can't see time. And we are very out of sight, out of mind. So my friends, you can't manage time. You can only manage yourself. And that is the best news. I'm going to say it again. You can't manage time. Nobody can. Nobody can manage time. They can't physically grab it and make it do what they want it to do. You can't manage time. You can only manage yourself. The people who, you know, you see as being really good with their time. It's because they're really good at managing themselves. Okay, great news. Now, Dr. Russell Barkley, and I'm going to quote him again. He's awesome. And I'm a huge fan of his book, Taking Charge of Adult ADHD. And not just his, that book, but also he has so many resources available on YouTube just for free, which is fantastic. Okay. But anyway, Dr. Russell Barkley is very well known for saying ADHD is not a disorder of knowing what to do. It is a disorder of doing what you know. Okay, I'll say it again. ADHD is not a disorder of knowing what to do. It is a disorder of doing what you know. (laughs) My friends, this right here, this is why I'm a coach. Because it was coaching that changed my life so dramatically 10 years ago. It is coaching that is how I was finally able to bridge that gap of always knowing what I, air quotes, should be doing, what it was I wanted to be doing, and actually doing it, right? So during coaching sessions, I teach my clients how to manage their mind, how to regulate their emotions, and how to do the things that they want to do in their lives. And this is why ADHD experts like Dr. Russell Barkley and Ned Hallowell and Sari Soldin and others recommend ADHD coaching. Because it works. Okay, got a little fired up. (laughs) Now, I have told you before that I used to really struggle with getting out of bed in the mornings and going for a run, which is now a walk. Okay, I'm like addicted to walking. But what used to happen for me is I would wake up to my alarm going off at 6 a.m. 
And I would think to myself, I do not want to get up. I'm so tired. It's cold outside. It's dark. I don't feel like it. I'll do it later. And I would feel full of dread. And when I was thinking those thoughts, what happened is it led me to reset the alarm and, you know, snooze or lie in bed generally and didn't fall back to sleep. But I would just lie there and toss and turn and, you know, kind of beat myself up for not getting up. But try and enjoy lying there. (laughs) It's like a catch 22. But ultimately it led to me feeling like shit later in the day because I did not do what I said I was going to do. Now, if you struggle to get to work on time, I want you to think about how do you feel about going to work? If you struggle to go to the gym, how do you feel about going to the gym? If you struggle to get out of bed, How do you feel about getting out of bed and doing the next thing? Things I I often hear will be, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. It feels too hard. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm too tired. Those thoughts are poison to our goals and to the person that we want to be. Now, we can allow them without letting them be in charge of us. So most mornings when I wake up, the alarm goes off at 6 a.m. Those thoughts, they come flooding into my brain. My brain says, you could just reset the alarm. You could do it later. It's cold. It's dark. All of that. I hear it. It's kind of in the background, like background noise. And yeah, I feel some dread. I feel a little bit of dread. I allow it. I don't fight it. I just let it be there. It's like a bad smell hanging around. What do I do? I get up. I get out of bed. I go into the bathroom. I put on my clothes. I take my ADHD meds. I go downstairs. I put on my shoes. I get out the door. And by the time I'm outside, literally 10 minutes later, that dread, that, you know, funky smell that was around me when the alarm went off, it's gone. And determination is running the show. And I'm out and I'm walking. We can allow our thoughts without letting them be in charge. And the same is true for our emotions. Like I can feel dread and still do the thing. The problem isn't that you don't feel like doing it. The problem isn't that you have dread, okay? The problem is that you haven't yet learned to manage your mind and regulate your emotions. And that's how we learn to manage our time and follow through, okay? Another thing that I coach many of you on is saying yes to things (laughs) that you either do not have the capacity for or that you wanted to say no to, but you didn't feel like you could. And my friends, we could, and I think we actually will, yes, we will have an entire podcast episode on people pleasing and that fear of letting people down. Because so many of you are saying yes to things because you're afraid of letting people down. Okay, I've been there. I get it. Okay, zero judgment. We'll talk about it. But I do want to just very briefly address it here because When we allow other people's needs, other people's wants, their requests to be more important than our own, what happens? We create less time for ourselves. We have less time for our needs and our goals. When we don't have boundaries with our time, we often end up overworking and taking work home and saying yes to things that we later regret saying yes to. Doing loads of things for other people in our lives, but not for ourselves. And that was me. That was me back in my travel agency days. I was overworking all the time, taking all the work home. Most evenings I would take work home. I was saying yes to everyone else and not saying yes to myself. I was fueled by anxiety and overwhelm. That was what powered me each day. It was awful. I was always hustling, 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 trying to prove myself to to what and to who? I don't know. My friends, that does not work. I speak from experience. (laughs) I tried really hard. Doesn't work. Hustle culture promotes emotional dysregulation and a mismanaged mind. It really does. 
Okay, instead, let's normalize taking breaks, resting, pressing pause when we need to, and protecting our energy. And in order to do that, we need to manage our minds and process and allow, regulate our emotions. All right, my friends, I've got four other things that I do to support myself in managing my time that I'm going to share with you. Now, of course, managing my mind and regulating my emotions is always, always, always number one. Top. Number one. (laughs) Always. Okay. And here are four other things that I do. So the first one is make time visible. (laughs) I have to have it visible. I've got it on my computer and on my phone. I've literally now got my step counter has got a watch on it, which I've started looking at. But we have time like all around the house too. So we have like little clocks um, and little, what are they? I don't even know what they're called. These little like box clock things. We have them everywhere so that time is visible. Okay. Make time visible because remember when we put it in sight, it's in mind. If it's out of sight, out of mind, okay? Multiple clocks and timers around your house and at work. And I used to hate wearing a watch, but I have really adapted and I find that it really helps me because I can be managing my time. And yes, I think we're very glued to our phones. I know I sure am and it's generally in my pocket, but it's just that other uh, one other place that time is visible. Number two is using one single system for time management. So I use iCalendar, iCal, and it links between my Mac laptop and my uh, my iPhone. Like many of my clients will use Google Calendar because again, like especially if you're on Android, right, it will link between your, your laptop and your phone. You can do the same with um, Apple products, but whatever, you just pick one. They all do the same shit, okay? <laughs> They all do the same shit and make sure you like use all the different colors for different things because that's fun. That's entertaining and enticing for our brains. But just one, there is no single magical system that is going to make life way, way better. Just pick one and go with it. Okay. And number three is ask for help when you need it. So (laughs) I know I can't do everything. I have accepted that. And at the same time, I don't want to. And sometimes I just need to ask for help, whether that be asking for help, like cooking dinner, because I've decided that, you know, I need to work a little bit late because I underestimated how long something was going to take or, you know, I just whatever. (laughs) All the examples have gone from my brain, but basically asking for help with not just time management, but also taking things off our plate so that we have more time for the things that are important to us. And number four is planning breaks and rest time. This is a biggie. So I used to just chock a block my, you know, my iCal with all the things I was going to do. And now I put in a lot of rest time because, and I plan like my walks and my workouts and everything like that, because when I didn't plan for that, it was not happening. So I plan to take breaks. I plan my lunch breaks. I plan my walks. I plan my gym time. I plan, you know, my time with friends and family. I plan all of that so that I make sure those things happen. And I also include white space. And I call that like my transition time in between tasks where I've got a little bit of like backup if I need to go over Or I've got some time to kind of adjust between moving between what I was doing and what I'm about to be doing because task switch, switching, switching, (laughs) task switching can be challenging for our ADHD brains. So I allow for that. I build that in. Okay. My friends, we can learn how to manage our time by learning how to manage our mind. We really can. Okay. So that is it for this episode. Huge love to you all. Take care out there. And if you have a minute, I'm going to remind you because, oh my gosh, I can't believe I remembered. Please leave us a five-star review if you enjoyed this podcast. All right. I'll see you soon, friends. If you are loving what you're learning here on the podcast, but you still feel like your ADHD is holding you back, I can help. Using evidence-based coaching tools, 
and my own experiences, I'll help you to manage your emotions and feel better, to increase your productivity, grow your self-confidence and create the life that you were meant for. Visit xenajones.com slash thrive and schedule an ADHD support session to get started.